everybody. I'm Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This is really way too long. Hello, good morning, happy Wednesday. We are going to start with the question of the day. Normally, I wait till the end of the podcast to do that because I usually don't have one. I have to make one up as I go along. <laughs> But today, today's question of the day is brought to you by Giblets. And his question is, if you had to wear one Halloween costume for the every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Well, mine is going to be the bald woman on Star Trek. <laughs> that way I don't have to think about it too much. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I'm, you know, I didn't think of her right off the bat. My first thought was... I don't know, I, probably something really easy that I would can, that I could make or, you know, that I could do every day, uh, something that's not going to be outlandish if I have to wear it to work and all that. But yeah, that's a good question. I like it. If you had to wear one Halloween costume every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Good question. I think I'm going to do this from now on. If you want to submit your question of the day to me, just send it to me via X on uh, Twitter or uh my direct messages on x all right and for some reason i decided to go with a bunch of medical stories today except for one we're gonna i have four stories three of them are medical one of them is north korea related okay let's start with the first one i put out there with this a doctor who apparently removed the wrong organ of a patient resulting in death A Florida doctor removes wrong organ from patient, resulting in immediate catastrophic death. An Alabama husband died on a Florida operating table when the doctor mistakenly removed the man's liver during surgery before the surgeon attempted to pass off the organ as an enlarged spleen, according to a lawyer representing the man's widow. All right, we're going to find out why this guy, an Alabama man, was in Florida doing the surgery. Maybe he was on vacation. He had a medical emergency. Maybe he was born here and he just moved to Florida. I don't know. William Bryan and his wife, Beverly, were visiting their rental property in Okaloosa County, Florida. Last month, when he suddenly began experiencing lower left abdominal pain. The 70-year-old Muscle Shoals, Alabama, that's real close to me. It's about 40 minutes away, maybe an hour. Uh, The 70-year-old Muscle Shoals, Alabama resident went to Ascension Sacred Heart Emerald Coast Hospital in Walnut County, Walton County, excuse me, where he was admitted for further tests over concerns about an abnormality of the spleen. Sarzar Law PA said Friday on Facebook. General Surgeon Dr. Thomas Shaknovsky and Dr. Christopher Bakani, the hospital's chief medical officer, persuaded the reluctant family for Brian to undergo surgery at the hospital or he could experience serious complications if he left the hospital, the law firm claims. Man, you know, you got to think about this for a minute. You're having some, made, you're having some issues. You're going to the hospital and you trust doctors who have been, you know, schooled. <laughs> They've paid lots of money to go to school to learn this thing. Number one, you think they might be smart because they uh, are doctors. Man, and you got to trust them with your lives. I mean, come on. Brian agreed with the doctors and underwent a hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy procedure on August 21st. In the middle of the surgery, Shakovsky removed Brian's liver by transecting the major vasculature supplying the liver. I don't know what that means. The surgical cut resulted in immediate and catastrophic blood loss, resulting in death. My God, have mercy. After erroneously removing Brian's liver, 
the general surgeon labeled the organ as a spleen, which was only identified as a liver after the man's death. Good heavens. Shagnovsky proceeded to explain to Beverly Bryan that her husband's spleen was so diseased that it was four times bigger than usual and had migrated to the other side of his body. Bull crap. Come on. I'm not a doctor. I don't even think that's possible. That cannot happen. Obviously, he's lying. Inside the human body, the liver is located on the upper right side of the abdominal cavity, just below the diaphragm and above the stomach, right kidney, and intestines. The spleen, located on the upper left side of the abdomen, next to the stomach, is significantly smaller than the liver, between 1,100 and 1,400 grams lighter, and is roughly the size of a fist. Cesar's Law claims Dr. Shakovny had previously wrong site surgery Oh, back in 2023, where he supposedly removed a portion of a patient's pancreas instead of performing the attended adrenal gland reset. Oh, dear. So he's done this before. That case was settled in confidence. Okay. But don't they have to report these things uh, to, like, a database or something? Not that the family would have, just, you know, had a chance to look any of that up. Beverly Bryan retained the law firm to get justice for her husband and is hoping the general surgeon no longer treats other. No kidding. The husband died while helpless on the operating table uh, by Dr. Shaknovsky. A, I don't want anyone else to die due to his incompetence at a hospital that should have known or knew he had previously made drastic life altering surgical mistakes. Yes, I remember listening to this podcast a long time ago last year a couple year ago something like that i think it's called dr death go look that podcast up the the first season of dr death where this is it the first season maybe it was the second season there's they cover a couple of different doctors but one of these doctors his incompetence was so horrible oh my gosh i think he is the reason they started they created this database where you can where they have to report these doctors and surgeons to this database so the other hospitals won't hire them. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. You can go finish reading that. That's pretty much the gist of the story, but we're going to move on to the next one, the next medical thing. Oh, this is horrible. If you have children, turn it off right now. Turn it off, pause it, come back and listen to it later. Sadistic New York City urologist Darius Paddock faces 143 more lawsuits, exploited more male patients than any predator in history. This is horrendous. Now, I'm not a guy. I'm not a dude, obviously. I don't know what goes on at a urologist with, with the guy doctors. And then I don't know. Uh, but what we are about to read, I think, is probably obviously not how it's supposed to go. <clears throat> it's a new record of shame. Nearly 150 more male patients are suing convicted, sadistic, former top city urologist Darius Paddock, making the case the largest involving male victims, now a total of 310 and a single abuser, any and a single abuser um, lawyers say. Darius Paddock exploited more male patients than any predator in history. Plant, plaintiff lawyer Anthony T. DiPetrio told the Post, while new court papers saying the doctor abused what is believed to be thousands of victims and survivors. The sicko doctor's depravity knew no bounds, according to disturbing accounts shared in a Manhattan Supreme Court filing Tuesday with victims ranging from retirees to several minors. Oh, gosh. He would inject a serum into some victims' penises to force erections for long periods, perform penile enlargements that led to disfigurement, conduct cystoscopies where a tube through the penis into the urethra without anesthesia and force some patients to get on all fours for humiliating supposed exams the documents allege. 
During some of the twisted sessions, Paddock walked around with a pen and would point to parts of the patient's nude body as if he were acting as a professor. It's worse than I could have ever imagined, said a mother of one of the latest plaintiffs, a patient at Paddock's uh, at Well Cornell Medical Center in a statement provided by DiPetrio, learning of what happened on those visits and has nearly killed me. I understand. Paddock was arrested in April of 2023, criminally convicted on May 13th, counts of sexual abuse in federal court. He now faces up to 60 years in prison. Good. Goodbye. Good bye to you, sir. Not even, I don't even call you a sir. You are an animal and I hope your prison stay. I hope you get what you deserve. All right, moving on because that's disgusting. All right, so this next one is a little bit lighter. I don't understand why people want to go overseas to get work done. Now, this is not an American going overseas. This is somebody in Australia going to Turkey. Why in the hell would you go to Turkey to get a medical procedure? Here we go. Woman warns against cheap plastic surgery in Turkey after spending 100000 to fix the botched veneers. Okay. A woman has revealed how she spent more than $100,000 on her teeth after getting botched dental surgery in Turkey. Well, you went to Turkey. Hello. Why? Kim Edwards from Sydney, had a rhinoplasty in Sydney once before, but it didn't go according to plan. When she broke her nose, she decided to get it fixed overseas. However, she figured while abroad, she would also get a facelift and veneers done at a total cost of $30,000. Okay, there's your problem. Well, your one problem is you went to frickin' Turkey. What a dumbass. She decided to go to Turkey, researching clinics by checking Google reviews, Real Self, Google Health, and Trust Pilot reviews. Oh no! Is really this is how you're going to pick your surgery? Okay, uh, I don't. I don't understand people. I don't understand people and their stupidity. She settled on a clinic that had a 4.9 star rating and only one bad review. Turkey teeth are a huge social media trend particularly with people from the UK flying out to have the procedure. I have no idea what turkey teeth are. I'm going to have to look them up after I finish this podcast. I, I've never heard of turkey teeth before. Must be on TikTok. But due to being under various medications, not being able to understand the language, and being in a rush to get back to the airport, she wasn't completely aware of how the procedure came together. What? is wrong with this woman she is not right in the head she's worried about getting to the airport so hurry up with my facelift oh my god this woman is a dumb ass with a capital d oh my gosh okay i don't even know if i want to finish reading this i mean i read it i've already read it and i'm i just am an astonishment I booked for veneers, but that's not what I came home with, Mrs. Edwards told the news. I came home with blocks of like four teeth in a in a row that were joined. I don't know what that means. It wasn't long after coming home, a block of those teeth fell out. And when she tried to reach out to the surgeon and clinic, she was told she just hadn't cleaned them properly. But she physically couldn't because of how they were put into her mouth. When she reached out again, she discovered she had been blocked on all social media. You're trying to contact them via social media? Uh, do they not have a regular telephone number? Ugh. All right. Her negative review, she reviewed them. Oh my God. She gave them a negative review. Uh, but it disappeared wherever she posted it. Oh my gosh. Ms. Edwards knew she couldn't do anything about the turkey dental practice, so she needed to bite the bullet and get it fixed. So she went and I guess had it fixed herself. What a freaking dumb ass. So now we're going to end with this other story with North Korea. Kim Jong-un executes 30 officials over floods in North Korea that killed 4,000 people. What 
Okay, first of all, I didn't know that flooding was happening in North Korea. I saw these images the other day on social media, on X and everything, of Kim Jong-un in these little big dinghy boats traveling down the waterways. And I thought it was a freaking joke. I thought it was a meme. I really did. I'm like, what in the world? I can't believe he's in these little dinghy boats right riding down the flooded waterways like this. But North Korea... North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered up to 30 officials to be executed over their alleged failure to prevent massive flooding and landslides in the summer that resulted in the death of some 4,000 people. All right, so the, what, how are they supposed to stop massive flooding and landslides? But there you go. That's North Korea for you. Mm-mm-mm. An official under Kim's regime said between 20 to 30 leaders in North Korea had been charged with corruption and dereliction of duty when the state sentencing them to capital punishment. My goodness, you can go finish reading. That is terrifying. But that's North Korea. Ooh, all right. So we, oh, we, already, we, already, oh, we already have the question of the day, so I don't have to worry about that. Thank you, giblets, for that. All right. So I guess I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!